and I will also, also try to speak English. I'm not so used to speak English in this house. It's easy to speak English in Brussels and in Stockholm, I think. I will try anyhow. I will talk about setting European standards in workers' involvement and the project that ETUC has for the moment and that I am involved in. And my message is uh, that workers' involvement is key for sustainable companies. Uh, and my, uh, those who no don't know me, uh, I've been uh, chief legal advisor at TCU for 17, 16, 17 years. And the last year I've been senior legal advisor at TCU to the TCU's president. And I will still, and I will be retired in three weeks from now. But I will continue to work with um, uh, in this project about setting um, uh, European standards in worker involvement uh, to the end of this year. So I'll be as a freelancer, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, my disposition is, I will say something first about um, our platform from the Swedish trade union in this work, setting European standards in workers' involvement, uh, a Swedish trade union approach. Um, I will say something about the Swedish regulation and EU directives on worker involvement. We have already heard a lot. I can just be brief on that point, I think. Uh, and I will say something about this E2C project that started uh, 2012 and will end with a resolution in the end of this year. And the Swedish confederations, uh, TCU, ELO and SACO, all three confederations, have working together to take to have a Swedish uh, policy uh, on on these um, issues. What 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 will we have in the future? What will we have uh, want to be regulated on the European level, and what want what do we want to have regulated uh, on uh, on um, national level? And something about threats and opportunities. And I hope there will be some uh, time left for questions and debate. And then we I think we all. Sig and Jan, together with me, will uh, ask some, take some questions and have some debate about this. When I'm talking about workers' involvement here, uh, it's um, what would say EU language. Uh, I mean information, consultation, and participation. And with participation, the, the last box, I mean employees' board level representation. And as we have heard, we can have different models in Europe. In, in, uh, in Sweden, we have the employees sitting in the board. In other countries, they are sitting in a controlling body side of the board. And information is, of course, uh, one-way communication from the employer. And consultation is a dialogue, a social dialogue. And altogether uh, it is this workers' enrollment. And if we look in Sweden, the futures, futures of Sweden, we can say that Workers' involvement in Sweden is exercised under the freedom of association in a broad sense. And that means not only to be a member of a, a, an association and to uh, have a worker representatives and so on uh, and protected rights there is also include to, to um, uh, negotiate and to co conclude collective agreements and to have the right to take collective action. These rights are very much linked together, and this is the very heart, I think, of, uh, of of trade unions, the base, the platform for trade unions, not only in Sweden but all over Europe. Uh, and that is also why we are so upset about the Laval judgments, for instance, uh, from the European Court of Justice, that restricted the freedom of association, and uh, that, that when ILO gave us the, uh, this. Uh, agree that it is a violation of ILO conventions. The Lex Laval, the, the legislation that come after the uh, judgment in um, Luxembourg. We ha have a high level of trade union density and employer organization. We have a high level of collective agreement coverage. And workers' involvement is dependent on conclusion of collective agreements. And you can say that to have a collective agreements in Sweden, then you have access to worker involvement, to information, consultation, and if there are more than 25 workers and at that workplace, you also have the right to appoint normally two members of the board. So collective, uh, collective agreement is the key, you can say, in the Swedish model. And collective agreement is also 
the tool that we are used to have an impact on corporate governance. There are not so much debate in Sweden about corporate governance issues. <laughs> it's important, but it's not so much debated. And I think the answer is that we have this, these tools and this um, social dialogue every day at the workplace. And workers are entitled to all forms of worker involvement in both private and public sectors. There are some difference, but there are more or less, um, you have the rights in both sectors. And we have low or no quantitative thresholds. As mentioned, we have 25 workers for board representations. We have some quantitative thresholds in uh, health and safety uh, regulations, where we also have information and consultations uh, rights. If you look in Sweden on the regulation and praxis, we can see that we these issues about workers' involvement are regulated in labor law and collective agreements, with, with some ex exceptions. We have company law uh, that is uh, important for uh, representatives sitting in the board uh, from, the, from the trade unions. And we have company law concerning European company, merger, mergers, and so on. But most of this, uh, the regulation you can find in labor law. I come back to that later. Uh, and most labor laws are possible to have to derivate from. They are semi <coughs> mandatory. That means that you can have <laughs> other rules in collective agreement agreements. And that gives also a strong ins in, in incitement for, for collective agreements from the legislator. And the primary law in this area, worker involvement, is the Co Determination Act, that is from the 1970s. Uh, and it has nothing to do with German coup determination. Let's be clear, clear, clear about that. It's uh, regulation the, the freedom of association and protecting protection of that, and the uh, information and consultation, the right to negotiate, and, uh, and that the uh, uh, employer are obliged to negotiate in some issues, and regulation uh, of um, uh, peace regulation when you have uh, coll collective agreements how to solve disputes and so on. It's a very important regulation in Sweden. Then we have the Board Level Representation Act. I come back to that. that and then we have the Trade Union Representative Act and the Work Environment Act. And I will now on only talk about Board Level Representation, but all these are rights, laws that are very important in the Swedish labor market model. And if you look at participation, workers' board level representation in Sweden, uh, we can see there is not a debate about that uh, there are workers' board representatives in the boards. There are no debate. Uh, a majority of both the management and the trade unions feel that they benefit from the presence of employees' representation in the boards. And we just recently in the end of last year, have some research from Levinson and Wallenberg, uh, uh, an article about this and what happens between 1999 and 2009. And I think this is not yet published in English, only in Swedish. So I hope it will soon be published also in, in English, because it's interesting, I think, for you to read. And as I have said, uh, Blur is only a complement to workers' involvement in companies. Um, uh, trade union present at the workplace are key and collective agreements. And if you're looking at, at, at the European level, it's also already mentioned here that if you look at the treaties, it's clear that the objective is to improve living and working conditions uh, in this area. It's not a race to the bottom, it shall go upwards. And Social dialogue is one of the things that are mentioned in the treaties and the right for the European Union to legislate on worker involvement. I can mention that just partic participation rights needs consensus in, in, in the council and the in the parliament. So uh, when we're talking about um, information and consultation, it's only a majority. So that is, we also had to bear that in mind. And if you're looking at the existing directives, we can find 
also these articles uh, that have been used as uh, the legal base for articles. And as already been mentioned, workers' right to information and consultation and also the right of collective bargaining and collective actions is fundamental rights and been binding since we have the Lisbon Treaty. And we have this common community charter of the fundamental social rights of workers. Information and consultation are also mentioned in articles 17 and 18. But that is uh, not, not so strong sanction on the la last charter. Uh, I think when you're talking about setting European standards uh, in Europe, you have to be aware of what legal basis do you have for that uh, directive. Is it company law or is it labor law? If we are talking about minimum standards, I feel as a labor lawyer mo much safer to be on the, on the social policy side than to be in the company law sides. Because from the Swedish trade union we have always um, um, pushing for minimum standards and the right to have higher standards uh, at the national level than the European level. And as you know, when we come to company law and the internal markets sides, we have experience from posting of workers, for instance, when a uh, minimum directive uh, changed nature by interpretation by the European Court of Justice and be, uh, become a maximum directive. And that is something that we don't like to see. So we are much safer if we regulate workers' involvement in labor law. That doesn't mean that we shall not also regulate in company law, but uh, I think we in the, f in the future must have a focus on labor law and the social policy. If we look an, in on worker involvement uh, on the European level, we can see three different forms of worker involvement, information, consultation and participation. We have three categories. We have the transfer of undertaking and collective redundancies. And in these directives we have also rules about information and consultations. Second category is the European Work Councils and EU associations as a European company and we have the cross-border mergers. And the third category is general requirements on employee or information and consultation. In, in Swedish we call this e EU MBL. And we also have the, the, frame, the, the framework directive of, uh, the directive of health and safety. Uh, and we, and we look on the legislation on company law and corporate governance. Uh, we have of course have the European company, we have the merger directive and so on. But we also have to bear in mind that companies are creators of natural law. That is from a judgment in the European Court of Just Justice. Uh, so in the very base, uh, the, the companies are created of national law. But we have also EU legislation in the treaties and we have um, case law from the European Court of Justice. We have the right to establishment. Uh, the European company had the right to establishment. And we have also uh, a lot of company directives in uh, EU company law. We have 16 directives and all these directives are, of course, very important for, for, uh, for sustainable companies. Audit, auditing, reporting, information, right to experts, transparency, minimum capital, and so on. It, it's also very important for workers. And our tra trade union aim is, of course, sustainable companies and to have a stakeholder approach that SIG has talked about. Uh, now I'm coming to this ETUC project that started uh, 2012 and will end this in December this year with we hope with the resolution of uh, about uh, European minimum standards in workers involvement uh, and before uh, the end of this year there are seminars and reports in the e executive it you see executive and it's also passing uh, working groups in it you see next group next meeting is the 9th of april and i'm sitting here uh, in this working group uh, and there will be a report about uh, this uh, project here 
in this uh, worker participation group. And this project is led by Claudia Mene, that is one of the confederal secretary in EQC. And it has a central steering group, steering committee, I can say, uh, that working with this project. And I'm the Swedish member of that steering committee. And there is also three country groups with about uh, uh, seven or between seven or nine member states are member in these working groups. And uh, in, the in, this in the Swedish country group, we have one person, uh, Roger Nilsson from IF Metall from Sweden. And we have one academic expert that is uh, Erik Schrödin that is sitting over there. And I'm, and we also have a, a group of um, experts from TCU. I'm, I'm from TCU, and t one from SACO, and one from, uh, and two from ELO, from all three Sweden's confederation, working with the policy issues connected with this project. And we have different teams of this meeting. We have been talking about how is the situation in the different member states. When it comes to normal activity, architecture of these rights in on the national le level, what happened when we have re restructuring, mergers, takeovers, transfer of undertakings, and how is the board level representation look like in the different member states? We ha we're talking about SWOT, that means strengths, weakness, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats concerning board level representation and about the debate. And we will also, we have not started yet, we are in the middle of the project. We will also talk about the scope of an EU instrument. How shall, how shall it look like? Uh, how shall the articulation between a new instrument on European level and the current directives look like? Should there be recommendations? Should there be code of conduct or legally binding rules on the European level? And this is, uh, some preliminary remarks you can say from the Swedish, from, 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 um, uh, from me as a coordinator, uh, policy coordinator between TCU, LO and SACO. It's not uh, discussed in our, in our own boards yet. It will be in, I think, after the summer somewhere. But this is what I believe will be the uh, policy in uh, regarding this. Uh, first, we think it's very important to that the EU has to respect trade union fundamental rights as recognized in international law. It had to do with the freedom of association as is recognized by the ILO and the, Euro uh, the European Court in Strasbourg and the European Social Committee in Strasbourg. Uh, we think that is essential and very important for 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 the future for worker involvement in companies. And company law rules um, are, imp uh, are important, but only a complement. I have said that earlier. Um, the rules on company law should be aimed at strengthening the long-term perspe perspective, and that should be a stakeholder's um, approach. We have talking about that earlier. We're thinking that all form of EU association should have rules concerning employee participation on the company boards of directors and rules about information and consultation. Here you can see uh, the symbol for a European company and there's a plus. And we are talking about the lap holes in, in the current uh, regulation. But the SE regulation is the best regulation we have concerning information on European level concerning information, consultation, and participation. But it had to be, of course, a, a better standard. Um, we also think that the rules concerning workers' involvement at EU level, uh, in information, consultation, and participation, should be coordinated with each other. There should be a link between these different rights. And concerning information and consultations rules should in the future be made more uniform based on the strongest EU rules as a model. There are, as we have said here earlier, dif different uh, standards in the different directives concerning information and consultations. We should, of course, have the highest level, the highest standards in the future. Uh, 
Of course, uh, without EU minimum standards on information and consultation, if there is no or low national standards, we can have no effective participation in company boards. Uh, I think that is um, very clear. Uh, the EU rules shall respect advanced national uh, uh, rules on workers' involvements, models and systems embedded in national law and practice. Uh, we think that is also very important from a Swedish trade union point of view. Uh, we shall of course also have uh, worker involvement rights in in we're talking about the transfer of registered seat, the registered seat pointed out uh, which, which law is applicable for board representation. So if the registered seats are moved, as uh, Aline talked, uh, 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 the workers can lose the, their right to board representation. If we shall have a, a directive, a 14 company law directive, we also need to have um, uh, minimum standards in concerning worker involvement on the European level, just as uh, each you see uh, demands, and we need also to have better rules concerning uh, mergers, uh, as we have said here earlier. Uh, uh, and a question is if we also in the future shall have EU legally binding minimum rules in all form of companies that that. Uh, uh, concerning employee pay participation when they are when there is a cross border dimensions if there are workers in different countries or if there is a in this company or if there is a, a group of companies that have workers in different countries in Europe shall we have a european standard for that that is on our discussion agenda for the moment we can see threats, of course. We have heard this, this today. The lack of social, and we think that the lack of social dimension, no balance between the freedom of um, for companies, uh, for uh, uh, for the freedom uh, freedom of companies on one hand, on the and uh, um, fundamental right on the other hand. There is no balance today in in Europe, and we have for the moment a uh, violation of fundamental trade union rights um, by the. Uh, by the judgment from the European Court of Justice. And um, the Troika, for instance, that uh, also I've mentioned, how they are, EU are taking part of, uh, 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 taking part of uh, violation of fundamental rights in Greek and other countries. Uh, we also have the current opinion, the political situation in Europe, of course, to, to consider is the, the is the, the right time to, to, to deliver to get something put back from the EU institutions on this uh, and legislature. And we also have very weak trade unions in member many member states, and that is also a, a problem, I think. And I also talk about this, that EU minimum rules can be maximum rules. We have, uh, Sig, I think, mentioned uh, the codification uh, agenda in, the in this uh, action plan. And uh, we have on the European level this so-called smart regulation, a policy from the European Commission that uh, shall combat what they called gold plating, meaning that the national level are higher. It's better protection on national level than the, the European level. And they'd like to, to combat the possibility to have better rules uh, on national level. And that is a very dangerous Again, I think uh, we have al already talked about the action plan 2012 and the transfer of um, the, tr the transfer of registered seat, for instance. I don't know. We can also have new judgments of course from the European Court of Jus Justice, but there is also, of course, opportunities in in the future uh, if we can create uh, that and, and so real social dimension in the Euro in European Union. And you that respect fundamental trade union rights. I have already mentioned that. Uh, trade union and collective agreements is key. I think EU minimum standards, we need that, regulating workers' involvement. 
We can maybe in the future have fewer di directives on information and consultation, but with the highest standards. And I, in, and I believe that consultation is more labor law than company law. So I prefer to have it regulated in labor law on the European level. And a stakeholder perspective in company law. And with Blair, uh, with um, board level uh, employee representatives in boards, for th these countries who don't have that today, it's a co of course a democratic approach that all employees in the company has to some extent the right to be represented in the board. That is important. And the link between the blur to trade unions and or work councils and European work councils. And the blur can be national guide for foreign companies coming to that country. And board level representatives can also have the function as whistleblowers. And now I come to the end. So if uh, Sig and uh, Jan will come, we will see if there is any questions or... Aline too, right? Yes. <laughs> Aline, sorry. I thought you have left. No, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I think uh, we have some minutes left, if there is any questions, so you can ask in Swedish, you can, uh, yeah, to me, it's okay. <laughs> okay. I was thinking it was interesting that you mentioned the, the whistleblower function in, this, uh, in the end uh, and um, you haven't really talked about uh, um, the legal aspect of uh, corruption uh, when you talked about uh, the legal functions of sustainability. But I was wondering what you're thinking uh, about the, the responsibility of um, workers in, in the on the boards if the company go goes uh, corrupt and they also have um, part of the, the responsibility when the when uh, the workers are re represented if you have uh, any comments I want to start <coughs> um, I, I think it's a very important question I thi also think that the U European Commission have uh, recognized the importance to have whistleblowers in the finances finance sector there are proposals for the very moment about uh, that the companies should have a whistleblower system of course and in the first place, uh, I think that the uh, board members sitting in the boards, in the Swedish board, for instance, they have s the same responsibility and the same uh, um, uh, duties as other board members. Uh, in the first place, they have, they have to talk in the board uh, uh, and give information in the board because uh, they also have the uh, have to be. Uh, there are secrets also to to keep in the company. Uh, so that is the fir in the first place. So they have to whistle inside <laughs> the board, so to speak. Hmm? Yes. Um, you're right. I, d I didn't talk specifically about whistleblowing, but I, d I think it is a very important uh, issue. I think we had a lot of financial companies that were having unsustainable practices, and the em employees knew what was going on. If they had stronger rights, uh, whistleblowing uh, rights, uh, then some of this stuff could have been prevented, perhaps. So, so I think it's a very important component. Um, and also, uh, we we talk about the need for uh, disclosure of non-sustainable, or sorry, non-financial information. Uh, and we're very much in favor of uh, disclosure of payments to governments, foreign governments, and that sort of thing um, in the sustainability uh, reports. And if uh, there's more transparency in that, that's, that might help uh, reduce uh, that kind of uh, activity. So anyone else? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the last point that I'd like to stress indeed is the fact that there is a difficulty for employee representative to act as whistleblower because of the duty of confidentiality. And, and this is very particular to the situation. So indeed, they could raise their opinion and oppose any corrupted decision at the board, but they do so in the secret of the board. And 
they have the same liability as any board member, meaning that if they do participate in a corrupted decision, they will have to um, uh, go before court as well and have to answer the question about how did you, well, were you aware of this corrupted decision? Did you participate? What was your vote? Did you vote for, against, opposed? But the issue that, and, and this is still the question, the question of confidentiality, meaning that they can act within the secret of the board, but it's still much more difficult for them to make it public and to raise publicly um, um, a potential corrupted decision that has been made at the board because they are bound by confidentiality. And so far they managed to find a way to get rid of confidentiality when they share information with their trade unions. And this is why it is very important to have the link between the employee representative on the board and the other body of representation. Because if the employee representation cannot um, deliver a confidential information to the public, he can find a way to transmit it to it, the trade union, and then the trade union could more easily act uh, as a whistleblower and make the information public as well. So it is then the reason why it is very important to have the link between the different institutions as well. Hmm. Uh, you have raised the question, you get four answers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, I would like to, s to add one thing, because, uh, I mean, um, it's not the negative part of it, but it is the question mark that you can have. Because I think that, uh, let's say, board level representation as such is not a guarantee. Um, uh, I'm coming from a country, uh, I mean, I've, I've been active always in Europe, but I'm coming from a country where there is uh, uh, representation in the board, uh, but that is a very loose, there is a very loose link with the trade unions, there is a very loose relationship with the workers' uh, representatives. Um, so I think that the participation as such is not a guarantee, but you have to also... Uh, organized in such a way that the people that are sitting in these boards are not isolated, are not there sitting, let's say, uh, for themselves, and that's it. Uh, and even in Germany, where, uh, uh, let's say, there is this uh, uh, link with the trade unions, I know from my own uh, experience that there are situations, and there, that there have been situations, where uh, the board level representatives, well, as far as I was, uh, I'm concerned, we were not really uh, in, a, in a situation of alert towards what was happening in their company. So I think that, I mean, to create a structure is one thing, but then you also have to have decent working methods in order to keep people fit at that place <laughs> and all, uh, also in order to, let's say, to have this uh, link. And one of the uh, important elements is, in fact, written there. I think that blurs that are, let's say, completely isolated uh, from uh, the ordinary information consultation bodies and so on, that, that is certainly not a good thing. And that is one of the things that you uh, certainly need in order to have a more, let's say, uh, integrated approach uh, as such. Mm. And I l I'd just like to stress again what, I li what has been said here earlier, that the link between the board representative and the trade unions in Sweden, Sweden for instance, and if there is uh, a question that, that is uh, confidentially in the board, um, the at, at, uh, and if the board representative at the same time sitting in the in 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 the in in the trade union um, board, and then the trade union can ask for negotiation according to the Swedish system, and the employer can ask for confidentiality, and th th you can discuss this. Uh, also in another fora, and I think that is very important. And also to that uh, not uh, make it possible for the European Union to restrict that possibility to have that kind of, of national regulation. No, just to add to that, because uh, it just makes me think about the fact that we stress the fact that the European company law and the corporate governance uh, at European level say few words about workers. And if indeed the action plan, if you just search for the work, the word worker or employee, we, you will have three, three times it will appear in the paper and so on. And that will be it. But the fact that it doesn't say a word about trade union, uh, and this is also something that we need to stress, that 
at the European level in the field of Campanilo, they talk about employee representation and it's very common that they just forget to talk about the role of the trade union in the institution of employee involvement. So this is one more reason for paying attention to this very important link between the employee representative and the trade union movement as well. Mm -hmm. Are there some more questions? Doesn't have to be questions, it could be <laughs> whatever. Okay. Shall we thank you, thank us all for this seminar and end it and give us applause. <laughs>